Hey everyone, so the other day I was looking for some specs on the RS-25 rocket engine, also known more commonly as the space shuttle main engine, when I came across a document titled RS-25 Incredible Facts, and that's what you're looking at right here. And I was reading through them, and then when I got to the last one, if we scroll down here, when I got to this last one, something didn't sound quite right. And so it reads, hot gases exit the RS-25's nozzle at 13 times the speed of sound. That's fast enough to go from Los Angeles to New York City in 15 minutes. Now, if you've done a billion practice problems involving rocket nozzles in your compressible flow class, you'll note that you rarely get anything close to an exit velocity that's 13 times the speed of sound. In this video, we're going to figure out where this number comes from. You might already be able to take a guess, but let's go through the whole thought process anyway. We will also see why I say this fact is misleading and not technically incorrect. And I'll be posting links to everything in the video description. This entire video can also be pretty much summed up in a couple sentences. So if you want to skip to the conclusion, I've written that in the too long didn't watch section in the video description. Now I've also debated whether or not to make this video because as I mentioned, it's not technically incorrect, but here's a question I would pose to you. If I told you that the Concorde cruises at around two times the speed of sound, would you say that it cruises at around Mach 2 or around Mach 1.75? If you answered Mach 2, then I I think you would end up agreeing that the statement in this document is misleading, so let's find out why. The easiest first step is to do some quick calculations using quasi-1D theory and the area Mach number relation. This equation relates the area ratio of the nozzle to the exit Mach number. And so normally when you see something that says x times the speed of sound, it can also be written as Mach x. So we are relating this Mach number with the area ratio of the nozzle, which is a geometric quantity for that particular nozzle, the RS-25, and is equal to the exit area divided by the throat area. You can pretty much always find this value for major rocket engines. There have been two different area ratio versions of the RS-25, one with an area ratio of 77.5 and the other with an area ratio of 69. I'm going to use the larger area ratio because it will give us a higher exit Mach number. I'm also going to be using the ratio specific heats gamma as 1.4 because that will also give us a higher exit Mach number. This is pretty much the worst case scenario or best case scenario depending on how you look at it and will give the highest exit Mach number. For this analysis, we're going to use the VT calculator. So let's input those values to this isentropic flow relation section. We're going to input the area ratio supersonic and we'll set that to 77.5. We can see that gamma is already set to 1.4. Press calculate. And if you look here, this is the exit Mach number and you can see that it's 6.546. And this is about half of what we should be getting. So let's flip it around now and stipulate what exit Mach number we want and see what the area ratio needs to be. So in here, we switch this over to Mach number and we know that it should be 13 and we'll press calculate. And if you look over here, you can see the area ratio is 1,876, which is really high. And actually at the nozzle exit, the gamma value uh, is actually more along the lines of 1.26. And so if we do this and we press calculate, now you can see the area ratio is up at 37,255, which is pretty crazy. So now let's move on to a more accurate method using the online CEA code, which is a chemical equilibrium analysis tool that can also analyze rocket nozzles. And so first we need some extra knowns uh, to use this program. And these are all taken from the RS-25 specs on Wikipedia. So if you go down here, you can see the first thing that we need is the chamber pressure, which is 20.64 megapascals. And the next thing we need to do is to go down here and in the pre-burner section, you can see that the, uh, that the engine operates at a 6.03 to 1 oxidizer to fuel mixture ratio. So now we're over on the CEA run website. And the first thing we need to do is enter a uh, four character alphanumeric code, and I'll just write Josh. And we're gonna be doing this based off of mass fraction. Come down here, don't change anything up here except for to change the problem type to rocket. And then we'll press submit. And then here we need to specify uh, the chamber pressure. And so down here, I'm going to specify 20.64 megapascals, submit. And then here we know that we're talking about uh, a fuel that is a liquid hydrogen, so liquid H2, press submit. And then the oxidizer is liquid O2. So change that, press submit. And then here uh, we're looking at the OF ratio. So the oxidizer to fuel, we know that's 6.03. Oxidizer to fuel by mass, press submit. And then here we're looking at the supersonic area ratio. And so we can actually put in both. So we'll do both 77.5 and 69. It'll just give the solutions next to each other. And then we'll press submit. And then submit without changing anything on this site. And here is the output file. So we click on that and we get to the output file. So let's just scroll down a little bit and you can see that we're looking at chamber, throat, exit, and exit. There's two exits because we specified two area ratios. So if we go down here, we can see that the AE over AT, that's exit area over throat area, that's the area ratio. 
This column here is for 77.5, this column is for 69. And so what we're trying to find is that exit Mach number. So if we go up to here in the Mach number row, we can see that for 77.5, we get 4.667, and for 69, we get 4.575. And this is even lower than what we got before. So where does this value of 13 actually come from? So let's look at the definition of the Mach number first. The Mach number is defined as the ratio of the local velocity to the local speed of sound, where the word local is the key here. So if we were talking about 13 times the speed of sound and calling it the Mach number, then it would mean that the exit gases were traveling 13 times the speed of sound at the nozzle exit. But what happens if we find out how fast the exit gases are traveling in relation to the speed of sound and air at sea level? We will assume sea level standard air such that the ratio of specific heats gamma is 1.4, the specific gas constant R is 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin, and the ambient temperature T is 288 Kelvin. And solving for the speed of sound at sea level standard, we get 340.2 meters per second. Now we need to find out how fast the gases at the exit of the nozzle are traveling. Let's solve for this velocity using the results from the CEA code, where for the area ratio is equal to 77.5 case, we can find the speed of sound up here in this row, also called the sonic velocity. That's the speed of sound at the exit. And that's 942 meters per second. And the exit Mach number is 4.667. And so when we multiply these two together, it gives the exit velocity of 4,396.3 meters per second. And so now let's just divide that exit velocity of 4,396.3 meters per second by the sea level standard speed of sound of 340.2 meters per second. And that gives us a value of 12.92, which we can round up to the nearest integer, 13. And that's, uh, that's it, that's where the 13 comes from. Now, I consider this to be misleading for the reason that I mentioned before. When using the phrase x times the speed of sound, it is usually taken to mean Mach x. However, if they had added the words at sea level to the end of the sentence, it would have clarified things. So now it would read, hot gases exit the RS-25's nozzle at 13 times the speed of sound at sea level. So going back to the Concorde example, when quoting the cruise Mach number of a plane, we don't relate its velocity at altitude to the speed of sound at sea level. We use the speed of sound at altitude. And now I understand that doing the calculation this way makes it seem more impressive, and this document does seem to be sort of a wow look at this brochure, so you could definitely argue that I looked into this a little too far. But anyway, I thought it would be interesting to go through, uh, through the analysis. At least maybe now you have a little more of an appreciation for Mach number and its definition. As a quick bonus, let's use the second sentence to figure out where the value of 13 comes from. So the second sentence reads, that's fast enough to go from Los Angeles to New York City in 15 minutes. The distance between Los Angeles and New York City is about 2,470 miles or 3,975 kilometers. 15 minutes is 900 seconds. So let's take the distance divided by the time and then divide that by the speed of sound multiplier of 13. And this gives us a speed of sound of 340 meters per second, just like we calculated before. I appreciate you sticking through this entire video and thanks for watching.